Welcome to the Founders Club session, guys. Today we have uh, Mr. Sashank Kumar, who has just got his startup uh, Razorpay to a whooping three billion dollar valuation. Now that I have your attention, let me hear it from Sashank. Hi, Sashank. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, and how is it going? Thanks a lot, Ramesh, for inviting me. Yeah, it's it's is going well as it can be right now. Uh, you know, we are. In the middle of one of the toughest situations, right, that we have faced as sure. a country, as a group, of course. Uh, and you know, we are kind of making our way through it. What I can say. Yeah. So, uh, so tell me something, Sajan. You you've been at it for a long time. It has been like what seven to ten years, I think. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the seventh year. Right? So we, this is the seventh year. Great. So the whole so, idea, you know. The whole idea to create something disruptive, especially in fintech, which is so competitive, how did this come about? Uh, so, you know, I think we started back in 2014, uh, which now seems very long back, uh, you know, in hindsight, right? Uh, and and I think in 2014, look, I mean, geo hadn't happened, demonetization hadn't happened, sure. right? Uh, so much push that we have today on digitization was not there. Uh, We, me, and my co-founder Hachil, you know, at that point of time, like we were working in different companies. I was in Microsoft in US, and he was in Schlumberger. And we co- keep on working on side projects, you know, our own uh, things that we hack together and kind of put out, right? So, in one of the side projects is where we wanted to accept payments, and mm-hmm. that proved to be like an extremely difficult task. And again, this is 2014, right? So, you know, what we observed, right, uh, that to Start accepting payments on the internet. Right? It's a long, cumbersome process. Uh, you need to reg- have a registered company. Uh, the banks ask for a lot of, you know, physical documents. Ask for whether sure. you are profitable, right? Whether you have an office set up. And we realized most of the businesses and SMEs are going to be like us, right? Uh, and and they wouldn't have all these questions to, you know, they cannot answer all these questions in a very straightforward way, right? A lot of SMEs right. operate from their homes, right? A lot of people are, may not have a physical location uh, at all times, right? So, and with the mobile picking up significantly, right? And with the with the uh, you know startups coming online, right? And this this was a time when startup uh, revolution was really beginning to pick up, right? The Flipkart and the likes had made uh, you know uh, selling on the internet uh, mainstream in some sense, right? So that is where we felt that there's a huge gap in the market. Nobody is thinking about of a small business, right? and how do they digitize how do they take advantage of internet how do they go online and start accepting payments for their products right and that's what is that's what you know we started solving for right most of the incumbents again we are focused heavily on enterprises you know because that's what probably pays the bills at the, at that kind of time right uh, but we felt like you know the, the sme industry is extremely important for the economy and you know uh, we have a huge opportunity on our hand in terms of like taking it forward right? and uh, uh, the trifecta of mobile internet and uh, you know startup growth uh, will propel digital payments into the into the next orbit right surely and and yeah yeah that's how we started so you got your pie very spot on because i'll tell you uh, you know we i uh, myself was faced a situation about 2 to 10 years back we had a small uh, web store i mean to, right now as we speak we use razorpay for our subscription processing division <laughs> and oh, it's really? actually okay. quite similar so i'm not trying to say because you know i'm with you right now but i think it's a commendable job because i we used to use something called cc avenue for some many days back and it used to take a month to get registered because of the documentation we used to have a separate tech team it was a nightmare so you know a great job in that space you know so seriously and i think uh, your story Thank kind you. of uh, Your story kind of goes goes some something like a, like a loan. You couldn't find a right payment to start PayPal. You couldn't find something to start Visa Pay. Is it the same space? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it's it was definitely solving a need for ourselves, right? You know, because I I I'll I'll tell you, right? I mean, for the economy itself to progress, right? I mean, we strongly feel that we need to build digital goods for India, right? We need to empower. people in india right and technology is a great way to sort of do that right so we definitely started from a place that you know we are trying to solve our own problem but i think there was a very strong realization that there are going to be like you know millions of people 
who are going who are going to be like us in terms of that you know they are trying to make ends meet they are trying to run a small business right so 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 it was a very simple leap to say that you know we need to solve for every entrepreneur mm-hmm. uh in in the country right uh but but yeah it definitely started with the problem that you know we ourselves uh okay. face so a lot of these startups are going to be watching you and uh, you know everybody would like to know like the problems that you had in raising capital the said uh, road blocks because Right now, it all looks good. Hunky dory, three billion dollar valuation, but <laughs> the journey always is very difficult. So tell us some interesting insights, how you overcame your know, personal challenges, or whatever you want to share. So, uh, see, startups. You know, I think building a business is is a journey of perseverance, right? It's it's a huge, huge, multi year uh, marathon, right? I think I think the initial years are of, often the toughest. uh you know in terms of because you're really figuring out like how to get traction how to get product market fit uh that is there right and we started in jaipur we didn't start in bangalore right uh because uh you know we wanted to really keep our cost low so you know despite despite us you know having some savings i think we are very cognizant that you know let's try and make and sweet in the least amount of money possible right so our expenses used to be like 5000 rupees per month uh max or 10000 rupees per month right and and that's like you know the moment you you know you take one flight i think that kind of covers that cost right? uh we used to uh you know go to banks a lot right for because we have to deal with payments right and banks are the ones who give out those uh, rails that are there right so initial days i think when when i i am from patna bihar so i used to go to bank branches in patna and ask around for payment solutions from banks and i think most of them were not even aware of so they used to laugh me off Like, I don't know, full of you know, I, and I, anyways, like twenty three years old, so you know that's it's another it, that's an age where in India people usually don't take you seriously uh, as well, right? But we are also like you know, look, we have to figure this out, right? I I don't think I mean, I'm sure like you know these these things will keep happening, right? Because yeah. we are very naive in that sense. We uh, we used to go to uh, meet people in t-shirts in those days, right? And then we started wearing shirts uh, yeah. that because that's what is is accepted formally, right? and then uh we would have you know uh we would have messaged you know 100 bankers plus on linkedin uh whom we can find whom we thought could probably help us with payments and only few of them handful of them six to seven would have replied right? and and then we got meeting with let's say three or four people right in in delhi and mumbai so of one of those folks when we went went to meet that gentleman you know it's very uh then it gentleman uh when we went to meet him this time we actually wore suits right because we thought like okay i mean that's what is needed right we took a we took a business plan uh, which we had prepared like overnight uh, one one or two days uh, kind of time right and we took it to him right so I, again you know a lot of bankers said no right in that process uh, you know in our hometown then in delhi and mumbai but ultimately only one yes matters right and and when we got our one yes after meeting multiple people i think we were overjoyed right? i think we were really happy that you know i think we have we got a feeling that you know we have won we have won the world like you know this if we have got this like i think nothing else can stop us but again i think that was just the start right i mean you know uh, uh i think every every month or two months i mean there are significant challenges that come right uh but the great thing was that you know every time we crossed some sort of milestone right or some sort of success i think i think that gave us a lot of energy to push ahead and and you know kind of carry on uh in in a very strong way right and you know it's such a regulated field right it's uh, payments is a highly regulated field and you have to deal with a lot of banks and agencies right i think we built that expertise and muscle over over time right because we are coming from engineering and product background right uh, so we we understand how to build products right when we used to go sell to let's say you know i'll give an example like we went to uh, the a school right a, a school or college to sell them payment solutions because it's saying look if it it will help you digitize your fees collection right and that will be great mm-hmm. right so so when we went and talked to them then they asked like okay i'll take your solution but then how much will you pay me for that <laughs> so, <laughs> like no 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 this is not how it works right we are you pay me solution so you pay me right so we said ki, okay what will be your charges so we said look it be, it will be probably be around 1% right? so we we threw a number out right so he said do you think students and Parents will pay you one. Pay, will 
I mean, you know, first was like, look, I mean, we can't pay this one person right? because this is going to come out of our bottom. So we said, you know, you you ask parents to pay, right? Because they have to today come to your college or school from other city or other place, right? In 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 hot summers and get in line and make the fees. So there will be quite a few parents who will be making the pay- payment online, right? And and over time that percentage will increase and fees will go, and you know this will go down. So then the next question was, okay, how do how what do you think? How many people will pay? that 1% extra right i said ki maybe like 30 40% right then this, the next thing comes is okay if 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 people are paying to of people are paying that much then i'll increase my fees by 1% like why do i need to pay that to you uh you know and and i was like completely done <laughs> like, you know, because, because the people who run the school are not the ones you know uh, uh managing that school on a day to day basis right so right. there's a, there's, right. a, there's a delta that just trust is a different So then we realize like okay what does like selling to enterprises and schools what is the intricacies of that right like how uh, how some of these things are there right the, so so again you know i mean these challenges you know of these things it's it happened and i think thankfully i think we we kept on progressing right we never Great. we never got stuck right so so so, so that's what you know i think the initial journey looked like i'll probably cover one more interesting anecdote so you sure. know there was Sure. We were working in a co-working space in Jaipur, you know, and the bank, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, evaluate just as part of their process, right? So when they came to office, I think we were concerned, like, how do we show that we are serious about business, right? Because you know, the co-working spaces concept was extremely new at that time. Correct. If you ask anyone, I don't think anyone would know what co-working means, right? So, uh, so you know what we did, we. we talked to everyone in that space and said like if anyone comes and ask you said you are working for us right <laughs> <laughs> so so when the, when the when the bank person came look said look this is this is our office right for the moment right like you know this is this is the space that we have occupied right and and i think i think they, it went well of course right because you know posturing on some of these things matter at that point of time but i mean it, it was a great experience right i think today fortunately like you know you know i mean we, we are in a much better situation we have st- very strong collaboration and partnership with banks and you know uh, it, yes. we wouldn't have been here without the regulators and the banking partners and our customers who have taught us a lot on the way so i said now that entrepreneurship is like jumping from a cliff and figuring out on your way how to make a parachute is exactly like that and you know when yeah you, yeah absolutely <laughs> and in india I, when I you think, are mm-hmm. I, I think you know that analogy needs to you know I'll tell you it is like you know uh, being in a plane and and learning to fly right while you are falling down. <laughs> correct. <laughs> because yeah, correctly because you have people with you who are associated, so you're taking them along in the sense. Oh that's yeah, what absolutely. Well. So great, uh, you know these things connect very well because the small little things like you know making the co-working space, tell them to work for you, and all these suits, all these are very small things, but they all really make. to make the first impression which really catapults thing things still today it works actually very very nice to hear this now tell me something uh, with the likes of paytm phone pay mozo just money and the host of them what is your unique differentiator i mean i know that it's very easy to integrate like smes can use anybody can use but how do you differentiate like in the market the payments you know is a huge field right but i think our clear call out is that we are solving for businesses that are there right most of the most of the you know uh e phone pay or google pay or whatsapp okay, they are mostly playing on the consumer side right and they want to solve digital payments from a consumer perspective right what what our mission is right because we think smes and businesses are the lifeblood of the economy are the heart and soul of the economy right correct and there is a lot of innovation going on the consumer side there is a lot of money also coming in to solve for the consumer side but you know on the business side right we are one of the few companies which are really trying to solve and and help with the digitization right and we strongly feel that you know if we are able to uh, digitize businesses right and and move them from tons of manual processes and compliances that they need to do to digitization and automation i think that would lead to a significant uptick some sort of uptick right on the gdp of the country uh, because those efficiency gains will Uh, cumulatively show up over time, right? Correct. In the next ten years, it is it is very very imperative that we do that, right? So that is the value that we add, right? That is that you know for any business, right, which is looking to streamline their payments, their financial operations, 
uh, that is there, we act as a one-stop partner to help with that, right? And today, you know, in every industry, right? For example, uh, you know, we work with a lot of real estate companies, right? right. Now, you know, tracking all the down payments and interest payments and everything, right? It's a huge pain, right? You have an army of finance people to do that, right? Things which should be done by machines should which should be completely done by automation, right? So we ran pilot projects on that, and we could show that you know we are almost driving like fifty to sixty percent more efficiency versus like you know what uh, you are able to do without uh, automation, right? Mm-hmm. And those are the things, those are the data points that really help us, right? Uh, that is really help us create those differentiation. I think in last uh, you know twelve months, right, since the pandemic started and beyond, right? There's a huge push uh, because anyways, everyone is working remote uh, these days, right? To the extent uh, okay. that you know, your your industry allows, right? And it, it's giving a chance for everyone to go back and rethink from scratch, right? That what they have, whether it is optimum, right? How can they utilize their cost much better, right? And, and how can they get more bang for their buck, right? And that is where we play a very strong role, right? So for any business, which needs to accept payments online or which needs to, uh, you know, uh, do its financial operations really well. I think, uh, you know, I think Razorpay is a great partner of choice there. Super. And we are able to demonstrate significant value, right? right. And I'll, I'll give you an example, right? So, you know, in pandemic, we have partnered with hundreds of NGOs and helping them with, you know, donation collection that is there, right? And... So we tied up with thousands of businesses who are there on our platform. And every time a successful payment happens, we show them a message, right? You know, do you want to donate something, right? Because to, for the ongoing right. pandemic, right? And we have helped raise more than 25 crores in terms of donation at this point. Now, Sashank, uh, uh, I used to go to this uh, show called Lend It. It used to happen in San Francisco. You know, I don't know if you know. I had go- gone through a couple of, couple of years because, you know, we are in the events business also. So uh, every time I used to go there, I used to meet a bunch of these fintech guys and everything. And next year when I used to go there, half of them were missing or they have shut shop. Like this in India, you know, this, this sector has, you've seen so many people actually shutting shop. So what's your learning? Like, what do you think has gone wrong? Because this is also a very promising sector, but people don't get it right. See, it serves, uh, you know, startup space in general is like that, right? It's... I think it's a it's a feature in a way, right? It's a it's a it's not a bad side, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, we want more people to come into the ecosystem and experiment and figure out what they can do, right? We should allow people to fail, right? Thinking of entrepreneurship, thinking of you know uh, managing a small business as a viable career option, right? Yeah. On par with some of the stable careers that are options that are there, right? So if we allow hundreds of experiments to happen. Uh, you know, it's it. You know, there's bound to be that majority of them will fail, right? And I think that's completely okay, right? Uh, you know, I think we need to figure out in India is how do we allow more people to fail and not take a hit on their career, right? How do we allow more people to fail and still come out stronger? Because that is what will encourage more ground up innovation, and that is what will mm. strengthen our, you know, industry in a much better fashion, right? If otherwise, you know, if you concentrate all the experimentation and you know innovation in few large companies, you know, I think I think that that's not a state that we ever want to be uh, in, right? On the on, on and you know on the finance and fintech sector specifically, right? There's a lot of that that is happening today, right? And the industry is growing manifold, right? Uh, so I so we'll see a lot of bright minds coming into the into the system into the industry, and I think. Uh, you know, it's, I think in next three, four years, five years, we'll see multiple companies, you know, becoming unicorn and becoming, you know, uh, getting market share. Sushant, very interesting question I'll ask you. You know, seven years back, there should be a lot of people used to come and set up their own web stores. Like, you know, everybody, every mom and pop store, they'll come and do a web store, do a payment integration. And eventually they realize that it's better to be a seller in Amazon on Flipkart and, you know, other things. So that, of course, takes away your price because if they are on their own, then they will use your services. Do you see a tra- uh, traction happening similarly or do you see that segment will again come back or do you see you're not targeting that segment? I think our our takeaway or our you know uh, view on the industry is very different. 
there was a time i mean you know around 15 16 probably that uh, uh, you know most of the sellers used to be you know just selling via amazon and flipkart right but today i mean especially in last in i'm just talking about in last let's say 12 14 months right we have seen 300% growth on sme side and one or only you know i think two out of three businesses who have come on board our platform are accepting digital payments for the first time right uh, which is a very encouraging sign uh, nice. uh, for very the industry good. right second there is an explosion of d2c brands right so you know uh, at least for the tier 1 audience and tier 2 audience that is there in india people are trying to reach those customers organically and directly by telling a story that people can relate to right by building a brand that people can relate to for a lot of brands also realize that while they can sell via amazon and flipkart they will be at the mercy of their algorithms in a way right uh, okay. and and they'll have to really figure out how to manage that right so a lot of brands a lot of smes really want to ensure that you know they have a direct relationship with their customers as well and we have seen tremendous growth in that it is really i mean with the with the multiple lockdowns that have happened right uh you know most of the consumers today are really really comfortable with online purchases right and and the consumers today are getting more tech savvy right yeah. they are trying to figure out how what are the new things that are available how they can explore more right and and uh, i think there's enough trust with online sellers today and we are even trying to increase that further right so with multiple lockdowns and in last 6 months your valuation has tripled basically in last 6 months and uh, coming up next will it be an ipo will it be a bank will it be something as aspirational what are the what are the plans ahead i think uh i'll tell you for you know next couple of years we are very clear on where we want to play right? okay. we want to continue uh you know helping with the digitization journey that we are on for smes in india okay. we want to ensure we want how, we want to see how we can help millions of businesses right uh to digitize to come on the internet and to take advantage of uh distribution via internet right and we are running multiple education sessions we are running multiple financial sessions to help with that and we are really building a lot of products to again you know uh help businesses understand uh how to leverage internet better and how to start selling online in a much better way that is number one and num- number two i think you know we want to be one stop shop for any kind of financial product that businesses need right uh, and that is why you know we started on new our new banking journey almost one and one and a half years back right where we are telling businesses that look you can get a lot more with the bank account that you have than what you're getting today right we are building a smarter bank account where we can answer for businesses right uh, how much is the burn today right how much runway they have left right what is the efficiency that they, we are seeing in the industry that they are in right so we can give a lot more actionable insights actionable information to the businesses and business owners on their finger fingertips to our financial products so we are committed to building more such products like how do we simplify your vendor payment so that you know again bring down the time that you need to uh, think about that right so we want to ensure that for for SMEs in the country right any kind of financial product that they need uh, we are providing uh, that to them and you know helping them uh be more financially savvy be more technically savvy and have you know the the, in, the information that let's say a tata or a, or a reliance have right on their fingertips while that is through an army of finance people how can a business owner have that same kind of information on their fingertips uh but manage through software right and manage through automation yeah. shank uh, what thoughts for aspiring entrepreneurs we're going to be at towards the end of our interview Also want to ask you, you know, when the chips are down, what what quotes or what anecdotes motivates you? You know, what do you look after? How do you charge yourself up? <laughs> I think uh, for me, it has always been that you know we should be building something larger than life, right? Our work should be larger than life, right? In the sense that how can we, you know, have an outsized impact, uh, you know, on the for the people around us right see i am very fortunate to you know uh uh receive a good education right I, you know I, uh, i've studied through iit roorkee for example right and i know uh, how much of our education for example is subsidized by government right uh you know 
so i feel like it's it's my duty to give back to the ecosystem in a huge way right uh you know it's i'm in a very privileged position to be to where i am right you know sure. uh uh so so if i have to make use of that opportunity right i have to try my best and that may result in failure right that that is completely okay right i think uh, you know there'll be there'll be a time where all of us uh, you know should actually fail right that should not right. deter right but if you if you don't shoot for you know the best that you can do then you will never do your best right nice. i think yeah. it's uh, all of us should really aim for you know what our best version could be right and it doesn't matter if chips are down right i think uh, it's in my view it you know at least the way i look at it like i i'll always want to give my you know my 100% to whatever i am doing uh, you know i'll just put my best foot forward and irrespective of the results at least i'll sleep peacefully that you know uh, you know uh, i tried my best right i tried hard right and i think after that success or failure is immaterial super so strong and guys if you are following us and listening this on podcast or on spotify or on apple don't forget to keep following we have amazing insights coming out and sashank thank you so much for your time and i wish this the next 6 months that we have we again triple the valuation and look forward and all the best for what you are doing <laughs>